where before we had wanted to put the river on Main Street, now Main Street is floating along with us on the river. Willimannock was the setting for all of our stories. coolest thing about Willimantic is it's like recurring frog theme and ever since I've been a little kid I've been like really obsessed with frogs and I just like one of my dreams was to catch a frog and keep it long enough to be able to bring it to show and tell in school and that actually was pretty consistent fantasy from kindergarten to probably about the fifth or sixth grade and I never was able to do it because I'd always keep a frog but then I'd feel so bad for it I had to let it go so I really love Willimantic's like connection with frogs and I know that this is sounding like a commercial for Willimantic you know like cafes and frogs but cafes and frogs are just you know some of my favorite things so that's kind of how I respond to Willimantic um, oh yeah and then the thing about the frogs with Willimantic I mean and I think this might be true but I mean I can't imagine why you like lie to make your city be like the frog city but I guess that when the British were invading um, the f there was a lot of frogs in the area, and the British were coming at night, and their footsteps scared the frogs, and all the frogs around Willimantic started to make noises, and then that kind of created a chain reaction where there started to be a lot of frog noise coming into the city, and so the people of Willimantic thought, that must be the British scaring the frogs, so they were able to retreat, get fortified, and ultimately they were able to dupe the British, and it was one of the one places that wasn't you know, uh, kind of taken over, I guess. But I don't know, I think for the most part, Willimantic's like any other town in Connecticut, kind of a mill town. But I think there's a good, good mix of things happening. Willimantic's like a really good place to get a taco. Oh, the nachos at the brew pub are super good. Really good. And uh, I don't know, I just met some really like interesting people in Willimantic. I got actually over 40 titles. I own a rail. I can make your vehicle get hundreds of miles per gallon and run emission free. It only costs like $200 to do that. But if I'll pay, you got to pay somebody like five. I'll tell you how to do it for free. You heat up the gas and you pull the vapors off the top. And if it's fuel injection, you already got a butterfly valve. You just pull the fuse and shut off the injectors. You can use a heating element out of a stove and a DC AC inverter, which they're cheap. Right. And then you just a little box, you only, and you only submerge it like a quarter of the way in, let vapors, and you put and you just pull the vapors off the top, let air go in. I got perpetual power sources. That one of them that you fits in the fucking the cigarette pack. 230 volts AC comes out of it. A volt and a half DC battery goes into it. Hmm, I've that's had really this for cool. almost 10 years. Yeah, it's like. So, what do you do? You invent stuff? Yeah, I'm invent. I can make a better spaceship. Really? I've traveled time. Really? <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. That's why he's that astronaut. <laughs> it's awesome. It's not saying doctor at the Department of Interior. I have a doctor. I got cures for diseases and viruses to help. That's cool. Wow. Take it easy. It's <laughs> a great storyteller. For those couple of days, there was something magical about everything that came along. Somehow it all fit together. Not in any way that made sense, of course. Just somehow.
Tell us about the potato peace pipe. Well, there is a kind of a potato that comes from only this area, the Willamantic area. And only it only harvests in the middle of the summer. And when the Vikings first came to the Americas, they found this root type of vegetable that the Native Americans presented to them as a gift. And what the Native Americans did is they hollowed out the potato and then they used a special tobacco that they put in the potato and they they smoked it and they passed it around in a circle while in camp. So of course the Vikings, they had their own pipes and they had this pipe piece, a small black pipe piece that then they added to the potato. So it became a sort of a modern pipe with a potato as a as the housing for the tobacco. So that's how they shared and uh, you know in the moment and Cultures cross-pollinated, kind of. Yeah, cultures cross-pollinated. And uh, to this day, you know, in the summer we harvest uh, <laughs> the potato and we smoke the potato piece by. <laughs> there you go. Turbine. You want us to fetch a stick now? <laughs> yeah, you gotta like bite it and bring it back to shore. <laughs> As we continued on down the river, we met some other people who had legends on their minds. They told us tales of their own. <laughs> so we had to run at night. We ran and, and we got we got on a show. We, had, a rock. Uh, we had big. We were going to come in up <laughs> awesome. here. The wind blew like crazy. Yeah. That one. But all along here, there's a lot of campsites. Yeah. Is this still a state park right here? This is a big state park. It's way up there for yeah. about a mile. And down the way here to And then there's another big one on the right. And then there's a 600 acre one, Selden Island. Right. George and his gang were on their way to Key West over the inland waterways in a traditional home built dugout canoe catamaran. Yeah. Well, just now it's been nice because it's quiet. Like well, the storm when the it. storm was starting to come, they, they started disappearing. I thought, oh, because I've been working on a boat here all day. Yeah. They went out, and, and the, the wind must have been blowing 50 miles an hour. Yeah. And they were out in the middle, and they were, they were just coming out. I'm going, oh, shit. Yeah. Here they come. 